Hi everyone, I'm Anna Brumba and I'm the principal clarinet of the Palm Beach Symphony. And I'm going to talk to you today about finger placement on the clarinet. I think it's a really important topic, um, how we place our fingers on the clarinet and with which pressure really greatly affects our sound on the instrument. As you can see, it's an open hold instrument. So we're not working with covered keys that we can just press however we're really sealing the air off with our fingers. And so how we do that with which pressure and with the accurate placement greatly affects our sound. I think one of the number one causes of squeaks and missed notes um, for younger players is actually their fingers, not actually the embouchure, but, but how hard they're placing their fingers onto the instrument and, um, and with which accuracy into the holes. I think that's a, a really, important topic to discuss with younger players. It's also a really important topic to take very slowly and to do a lot of slow practice so that you really learn proper finger placement before moving on to harder pieces. So the first place to start is not actually with the fingers, but rather with the back. I think it's really easy to think about your fingers and then get tense everywhere else, and then we don't know why we can't relax our fingers. It's because our whole body is tense. So I want you to sit in a really relaxed posture and think of your shoulder blades as sinking down into your back, kind of so your shoulder blades aren't up, but rather sinking into the back with a strong supported core. And then with that, think about your elbows just resting at your side really naturally. And then you can come into the wrist is also relaxing with that relaxed arm and wrist right here. I think I put most of my energy kind of into my biceps, lower biceps, um, as holding the clarinet, not into your wrists at all. Um, so that brings us to the fingers, and, and at this point they should be pretty relaxed because most of the energy is actually going into your back, your core, and your arms. You're taking a lot of the energy out of the fingers. So the first thing you want to think about is the curvature of the fingers onto the instrument. I think if you just shake out your hand really easily and you lift it up into a natural just hang kind of feeling, that should be pretty much the curvature of your fingers. You don't want to over curve and you don't, definitely don't want any pancake fingers. So the curvature of the fingers onto the instrument is really important. Just a really natural curve. Just like that. Now the next step is how hard we're going to press our fingers into the keys. Now that we sort of have um, the curve of the fingers going over the keys, how we're going to press into the keys is really important. I see a lot of younger students pressing super hard to the point where they get their fingers to look like that. I'm pressing extremely lightly, but it's more than just pressing. I think you have to think about actually sealing the holes since the air on the clarinet is actually coming out of the holes, not the bell. Most of it's coming out of the holes, so we're actually physically sealing the air off as we play. I think the best way to demonstrate this is with a straw, actually. I don't know if when you guys were little, um, you go to restaurants and you would like, I have an older sister, so I did this to my older sister all the time, where you like take the beverage that you're drinking through a straw like this, and then you spray it at the person. I don't know if, sorry to my sister that I did that. But it's a really good exercise for clarinet playing. The next time you're with a straw and a beverage, I want to see if you can pick up said beverage with your straw. The most important thing that we're doing right here is actually sealing the top of, this, of the straw with your finger. And you see, I'm using the meatiest part of my finger to do this. I'm not using the back of it. I'm really, getting into the straw and I'm able to seal it. The other important part is the pressure that I'm using. I'm not smashing my finger into the straw, I'm not destroying the straw, I'm just lightly sealing it. So if you didn't do this as a little kid, you can do this now and you can figure out proper placement of finger onto the straw. The exact same pressure applies to the clarinet. When I put my finger over the hole, I'm not pressing super hard, I'm just sealing the hole sealing the air off from, from getting trapped. So you can do this with silent practice, as you can hear, or not hear, hopefully your finger movement is pretty much silent. Just like with the straw, you can practice kind of just making sure you're not really hearing anything except for a little bit of key movement. 
So that's the pressure that we're placing on each um, key and with each finger. The last step is to think about the actual motion of the fingers. And I think rather than really thinking with the fingertips, which can also create tension, I like to really think about moving from the back of my knuckles. So rather than like lifting with the tips, I lift from here. And I think that gives a really unified feeling to the whole hand so that you're not actually thinking about each finger really individually, but rather that each, the finger is built off of this system that can kind of control them all uniformly. Um, the height to which you lift your finger is also really important. I like to use a cheat, which is, see this key right here that holds your um, throat A flat and G sharp down? Kind of, it's, it's a good height indicator. You can sort of look down the instrument and see it at all times. I like to keep my fingers below that height at all times. Whenever I'm practicing, I try to always make sure they're below that. So as you can see, they're never coming further off the instrument than they really need to. Um, just enough to open up the hole, but no more. The other really important thing is that they're not going all over the instrument, rather they're just lifting up and down, not side to side, just up and down. So the best way to practice your finger technique is with finger isolation exercises. You can make these up on your own um, just by moving one finger at a time, or you can use the close exercises or the body mancum exercises. Um, and I like to do them really slowly and in front of a mirror so that I can really feel that I'm in control of how I'm moving my fingers. With many hours and many years of doing these finger isolation exercises, you should improve your technique.